Hi everyone! In the previous videos, we've seen how to create textures for the mountains and grasslands that make up the terrain in our project. In this video, we want to cover one last surfacing technique to create the snow caps that occur at the higher elevations on the mountains and the volcano. We'll start by using the same techniques as in the previous videos, by creating new surface layers for each important level of snow. What's new in this video is the type of mask we'll create to constrain where the snow will appear on the terrain. The goal that we want to achieve is to have greater snow density on the shadowed side of the mountains and less snow on the sunny side. We'll do that by sampling the terrain's geometry to determine the direction the polygon normals are facing, and then use that information to create a mask that isolates the part of the terrain that faces in the direction we want. Start by adding a new surface layer and renaming it to something descriptive like deep snow depressions. Set the apply color value to 0.9 because we want the snow to be brighter than the surrounding mountain textures. Just as we've seen in the previous videos, adding a new surface layer overwrites all the color information that came before it. Let's constrain this surface layer to the shadowed side of the terrain by combining several of Terrigen's function nodes. Click once in an empty area of the node network view to activate the pane, and then press the tab key or end key on your keyboard to bring up the quick node palette. You can immediately begin typing a search pattern to look for in the list. In this case, we'll type the word get, and when the get normals and texture node is highlighted, press the enter key to add it to the project. Do the same thing to add a constant vector node and a dot product node to the project as well. Now, connect the output of the get normals and texture node to the main input of the dot product node and the constant vector output to the input 2 of the dot product node. The constant vector node is where we choose the direction of the normals we want to keep. So double click on it and set its x value to 1.0. This means the mask we create will include any terrain that faces the positive x axis. We could also think of this as facing a particular direction, like east for example. The dot product node performs the actual calculations and outputs the mask. If we connect the output from the dot product node to the mask by shader parameter of the deep snow depression surface layer, we'll start to see the snow layer forming on the east side of the volcano. But it's pretty faint. In order to fine tune the mask, we'll add a color adjust shader and connect the dot product output to the main input of the color adjust node. Then double click on the color adjust node to open its settings. Set the black point value to negative 0.4, and now we can see that the snow is covering the eastern slopes of the volcano. Reduce the white point value to around 0.75 in order to brighten up the snow even further. For even more information on using Terrigen's function nodes to create masks, please see the link in the description below. Under the surface layer's altitude constraints tab, Set the minimum altitude value to 1,000 meters, which means that the snow will only occur on the terrain above elevations of 1,000 meters. Then, set the minimum altitude fuzzy zone value to 1,000 as well. The use of such a high value on the fuzzy zone parameter will result in a soft and gradual buildup of the snow layer from the lower altitudes to the higher elevations. Under the Effects tab, enable the Intersect Underlying checkbox and choose Favor Depressions as the type. This has a similar result to using the Get Altitude and Get Altitude in Texture node setup that we used for green vegetation shaders, only it's built into the surface layer itself. Now, reduce the opacity of the snow layer under the Coverage slash Breakup tab by lowering the coverage value to about 0.1875 and disable the Fractal Breakup checkbox. This will cause the snow to occupy just the deep depressions of the terrain on the shadowed side of the mountains and volcano. In this rendered image, we can see the first layer of snow forming. Next, we want to create a light dusting of snow over the rest of the volcano. Using the same techniques, add another surface layer and rename it to something descriptive like frost. Set the apply color value to 0.9 to make the snow brighter than the surrounding mountain textures. Since we're adding a lot of white snow layers on top of each other, anytime you need to visualize the placement of the texture, you can temporarily enable the test color checkbox on the surface layer. 
Under the Altitude Constraints tab, limit its minimum altitude value to 700 meters and its minimum altitude fuzzy zone value to 500. In the node network, duplicate the color adjust node we created in the prior step by selecting the node and pressing Ctrl C on your keyboard to copy the node to the clipboard and then pressing Ctrl V on your keyboard to paste it into the project. Double click on the new node to open it up and change its black point value to negative 0.5. Drag the connection line from the output of the dot product node to the main input of the new color adjust node. Then, connect its output to the frost surface layer's mask shader input. In this rendered image, we can see the two snow layers we've added so far. Let's add one last surface layer and rename it High Frost. Then, set its apply color value to 0.9 to make this snow layer as bright as the others. Limit its minimum altitude to 1,300 meters and its minimum altitude fuzzy zone value to 500. To create the masking nodes for this surface layer, start by adding a Get Normal node in the Node Network view. This node differs from the Get Normal and Texture node because it takes into account all the displacements on the terrain. Also, add another dot product node. Then, connect the Get Normal node's output to the main input of the dot product node. Connect the existing constant vector node's output to the input 2 of the dot product node. Duplicate one of the color adjust nodes. Then double click on the new color adjust node to open it and set its black point value to negative 0.75 and connect the output of the dot product node to its main input. Finally, connect the output of the color adjust node to the mask shader input of the high frost surface layer. To see the exact placement of the high frost surface layer, temporarily enable the test color checkbox of the surface layer. In this rendered image, we can see the snow covered mountain and volcano peaks. This completes the texturing of the environment within our project. And together with the lighting, clouds, and forest populations that we've covered in the previous videos, our scene is ready to be rendered as a background image sequence for compositing, and also as a spherical HDRI sequence in order to provide lighting data for third-party 3D software packages. In the next video, We'll take a closer look at Terrigen's render parameters and the considerations that go into determining the optimal render settings for a visual effects project such as this. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.